The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In the Gospel, Jesus says that we, as disciples, we um, Christians, are the salt of the earth. That is, to some extent, we give it some spice, we preserve the earth. Um, in some ways, we give it some kind of flavor, something different and special ab about it and about us as Christians and followers of Jesus. And he says that we Christians are the light of the world. We give it some direction, we bring it some joy. And the implication is that without Christians, the world is in some way a little bit of a darker place. Um, maybe on a couple of different levels. But Jesus um, gives the familiar analogies that we are the salt of the earth and we are the light of the world. We bring some kind of spice and variety and flavor to the earth and we bring light to the world as well. So that without Christians, the world is not the same kind of place. Even though it has its values and some of those coincide with Christianity, some do not. Again, the implication being that the world is a better place because of us Christians. I think some part of this is certainly true um, with respect to doctrine. You know, church teaching is guidance, and um, the, the doctrine and dogma of the church gives the world some kind of light and salt and direction. For example, teachings like faithfulness and marriage, religious freedom for all people, taking care of the poor and the sick, valuing children, the dignity of work and workers, civil disobedience in the right way. These are Christian teachings not exclusively Christian, that have developed over the years in some ways. But these are, um, church teaching and doctrine touches on all those um, topics and others as well. And they're all, for the most part, pretty much commonly accepted and understood these days. But there was a time, historically, when all of them were under attack, either at one time or another, and their acceptance was greatly questioned. And the church, you know, being very firm, um, made sure that, um, no, as Christians, this is the way we need to behave, especially with respect to faithfulness and marriage. In some ways, the church is very responsible, in some sense, for um, spouses being encouraged to be faithful to one another to remain in marriage. But in a very real and concrete way, it's not just church doctrine that's the salt of the earth or the light of the world. You and I are, as Christians. We are the, the salt and the light of the world you are salt and light for your family, especially, and for the people that you encounter on a daily basis. And actually, you do more to change the world by influencing and teaching and guiding your family, especially with Christian values, so that in a sense you season and you enlighten your family and the other people with whom you come into contact. There are times and sometimes when I wonder, or I think about how um, dedicated you and I are to Christian values and to what Jesus teaches, to really being different in some sense from other people in the world. For example, um, when I open the Ukaipa news mirror and I look in the crime section, they're very blunt with the names and ages of people sometimes, right? It's really big in the headlines, kind of shaming people for what they did in a sense. But when I look at that, I always, I'm always afraid of seeing the name of somebody I know from St. Francis Cabrinius. I hope I don't see anybody from the parish in there. Not in that section of the paper, right? Other parts of the paper are fine, but not in the crime section, please. And I can't say that I have, that anybody's been arrested that I know at least by name, since they don't put their faces in the paper. So I've, no one's there for assault or robbery or hit and run or those kind of things. Thank goodness. Um, not that Catholics don't commit crime, but they do. But the idea being that Hopefully you're different. You're the salt of Ukaipa, you're the light to Ukaipa as well, and you don't do things that other people who don't believe do, I hope. Sometimes I think and I wonder, in, in a time, a situation of a natural disaster, 
or a crisis in a big way, would you be the light of Yukaipa and salt for Yukaipa as well? And I think about Hurricane Katrina several years ago and the recent typhoon in the Philippines and other disasters. And so many times what follows from that, people looting stores, stealing from one another, hoarding their goods, being violent towards one another, and maybe just a whole state of anarchy, of lawlessness. And I wonder, would the parishioners of St. Francis Cabrini act like that? Would you be doing those things? Or rather, would you maybe act a little more like Jesus would in a situation like that? Would the parishioners of St. Francis Cabrini, would you share your food and water? You know, if there were nothing coming for three, four, five, six days, would you willingly fast a little bit? Would you self-sacrifice? Would you help clearing roads, burying the dead? consoling those who are grieving? Would you be somebody that talks and tries to demonstrate being peaceful and calm as opposed to being lawless and kind of in a frenzy the whole time, even though you might be mourning yourself and out of communication with loved ones? How would you behave in that kind of very, very stressful situation which calls into mind some of our most basic values and kind of brings to the forefront some of our basic instincts as, as human beings? Or would you be just like everybody else, right? Other people who fall into those temptations. Would you stand out because of your Christian values? Would you be salt and light for the people of Yukaipa and Kalamesa? Those are kind of extreme examples, but maybe more on a regular basis in part of your life. Do you have the courage and the discipline and even the desire today to be um, salt of the earth and light of the world? to share, to be a generous person, to help other people, to not be materialistic, to be self-sacrificing, to be a good hard worker. That is, do you have the desire and the discipline to behave like Jesus would if he lived in America today? Would you act like him? Do you have the courage and the discipline and desire to be a little bit different from other people, from non-believers? It's not a question of being anti-American or anti-culture. Our society has some good values, but there are some values in our society that are really kind of counter-Christian, right? Maybe um, the opposite of what Christ would teach us, unfortunately. And so while it's easy to fall into that because we live in this society and we're American, can you stand out by virtue of living your faith, of putting it into practice? Or is your faith hidden, right, under a bushel basket, like Jesus implies? In the basket of only in your home, or only here in church on Sunday for an hour, that's the only time your light shines, or only when it doesn't conflict with the values of society, maybe some of the, the anti-Christian values, unchristian values that you may hold on to, is that the only time when you're putting your faith into action? Because again, the idea is that we're a little bit different because of our values. For Jesus, it's never a question of us hating the world. Jesus loves the world. God loves the world. Jesus wept for Jerusalem and the world. The world's not our enemy in that sense. We're always battling against it. Even though some of the values of societies may be anti-Christian, we're called still to live in the world even though we're not of the world. Be part of the world and interact with other peoples, non-believers included, but our, we must stand out because of our faith. Do you, um, do you, in a sense, flavor and light up the world as salt of the earth and light of the world? And not doing that, standing out by being a famous celebrity or anything, but simply by putting your faith into practice so that you're a little bit different in certain situations especially that other people fall into and give into all the time. You're a little bit different because of your values and because of your morals. As Christians, we're called to love the world, we're called to love humanity. Even as we recognize that, as human beings ourselves, we have our flaws and our weaknesses. We can only live as human beings, and yet we're called to live with God's values, not just the values of society and of human beings. And that's how we're salt of the earth and light of the world.